All right, everybody, welcome. We are here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I got my good friend Ian Bick with me. We are here to talk about the facility where they are actually holding Diddy right now. And I had Ian come on here because Ian has actually been inside that facility. So he knows a little bit about that facility. What we're gonna be talking about right now is the fact that Diddy didn't eat for the first seven or eight days that he was locked up in this facility. And if you know, you know. If you've been locked up and you're paranoid and you know exactly what's going on, you know, but I know a lot of people at home don't. Diddy is worried that he might be getting poisoned. So I'm going to be talking to Ian Bick about this. Everybody ready? Buckle up. Let's go. Welcome, man. Glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me. I feel like I'm an official prison consultant now. Yeah, you definitely are, bro. That's what we're doing today. And I'm sorry I'm yelling into your microphone. I see a little spittle right here, but we're going to live. We're going to live, My bro. ear, it's crazy being right in here in person with the yelling, man. Yeah. <laughs> and well, the yo, headphones. You know, it's really cool to be here with you and having the whole live studio set up, man. This is cool that you got this portable, bro. I'm really proud of you. So let's talk about this facility. What facility is Diddy housed in right now? And give us your experience as to why you went there and what it was like for you real quick. So I spent four months in MDC where Diddy's at. Uh, that's a metropolitan detention center in Brooklyn, New York. The counterpart to that was a Manhattan correctional facility where, you know, Epstein was there. A lot of other like cartel guys like El Chapo and whatnot. That facility is now closed. I imagine Diddy would have been at the Manhattan correctional facility because he was charged out of that district um, if it was open, but they closed it because of corruption, which we're going to get into. I was in, in MDC because after I got sentenced, that's where you go when you're on the East Coast is kind of like the hub um, for awaiting transit um, to your federal facility, or it could be uh, where you're awaiting trial. That's like the New York area or New Jersey. If you're awaiting trial, awaiting sentencing, like B Diddy is right now, he's awaiting a trial, a court date, uh, and he doesn't have bond. So he's at the MDC. And that's basically like a tower building, like where R. Kelly was held in Chicago. We were just talking about MCC. It's a large tower. Uh, it's one of these detention centers are extremely secure. One of the most secure federal prisons uh, in the country, uh, these detention centers, there's no breaking out of it. You're all the way up in this tower that overlooks, um, there's, I think there's a bridge you could see. Um, the windows are very small. There's bars on the windows. On the way bottom of the basement is like the R&D, the receiving area where inmates get bussed in and processed. And then you're going up to the different floors and there are also women held in that building just on a different floor as well. Yeah, so I've been to the one in Portland, uh, the Multnomah County Detention Center, and it's one of those like high rise detention centers. Those things are serious as a heart attack. Uh, so the counterpart to that got shut down because that's literally where Epstein got Epstein and it was shut down due to corruption. Is the one that Diddy's in right now, do you think, uh, did you see any signs of corruption when you were there? I mean, yeah, the, D the Department of Justice runs all, and the BOP specifically, um, they, shut, they did a whole, the watchdog for the Department of Justice shut down the Manhattan Correctional Facility because of the corruption. And those are federal employees, BOP employees, they're all corrupt, it's the same system. Like when I, I can tell you any pr federal prison I was in, there is always a guard that's willing to get paid to smuggle in contraband, um, get special treatment. If you have money in federal prison, it's powerful. Now the court system's separate, which is why Diddy can't pay 50 million to get out. That's a different jurisdiction. But once you're in the custody of the marshals, the federal prison system, that is way more accessible to access corruption. Absolutely. And so there has been a lot of alleged uh, ties for years to Diddy with the NYPD. Uh, it's also been stated over and over again for decades now that Diddy is a federal informant. And we know that he's been recording tapes at these freak offs where he'll have people come in, he Cosby's their drink, and next thing they know, they wake up with a wet booty hole and it's all wallered out and they hurting and everything, and they don't know what he's taped. And a lot of the time, he's taped dudes just running through celebrities or politicians, stuff like that. That's the running theory on all of this, and we haven't gotten the tapes, but it does fit his MO with what he's been doing to females and particularly males. Uh, he's been wallering out dudes for a long time, paying to have him brought across state lines, all of this stuff wrapped up. But I think that he has been working with people on such a high level, especially in New York City, uh, you know, New York City officials, people within the NYPD, uh, you know, feds. And I think that they went, they raided and went and got his tapes. I think that a bunch of those tapes disappeared. 
I would be really shocked if, if they didn't. And I don't have proof to back this up. So everybody at home, this is what my theory is. And it's a very educated guess at this point. But I would think that he would probably be very, very concerned that he was going to end up just like Epstein. Like, that's a very valid concern for somebody who's been playing such a dirty game with powerful people for so long who just got dethroned. They just took him completely off the map as far as having any type of protection other than being in protective custody. And I'm going to tell you this right now. There's no safe spaces in prison. There's not like some place where they can put you where you're going to be absolutely like Epstein was in suicide watch. He had guards that were supposed to be at his door. There was a camera and the cameras just magically broke right when he Epsteined himself, right? He Epsteined himself. So it's very plausible that Diddy is super worried about the idea that he could have poison brought in in his food if he didn't eat for seven or eight days. Now, look, a lot of people when they go into, uh, in, you know, being incarcerated, they're coming down off opioids and they have a real hard time eating for the first few days. But to go seven or eight days without eating is pretty extraordinary. That's a great length to go to. Um, do you think that it's plausible? And I'm not saying that you would have insider information on this, but do you think it's plausible that he could somebody in a high place in New York could find somebody who was corrupt enough to slide something into his food when it was brought to him at Suicide Watch? Listen, the way I look at it as if a guard can get a cell phone or drugs into the most secure federal prisons, you know, in the country, getting a little bit of poison or whatever in through whatever is, is highly possible because you would have to have everything robotic to make it totally foolproof that he was good or you'd have to strap him down and force feed him and have like the president of the United States who, you know, there's corruption on its own or whatever before you even get into that. But you would need someone that's uncorruptible to actually feed him to prevent 100% absolute, you know, n not being able to corrupt someone. So it, it's 100% possible that someone can drop food or poison or whatever into his food. And I doubt they have inmates at MDC most of the time, they'll bring up a cart um, or this is what they do. They bring up a cart to the unit and the inmates will serve the the, in, um, the other, other inmates that are working in the kitchen. And this, like we saw in Epstein when he's in solitary or in the shoe or protective custody, which is all the same thing, the guards will bring the food to the cell. I don't think they're going to risk after what happened at the MCC with Epstein to happen again. But I mean, did he, are, anyone in these high influential places, they have money. Anyone can get bought. It's, you could see who's working there. You could figure it out, you know? you can have the most secure federal prison, something's gonna happen. Yeah, if you offer somebody 10, 15 grand who's making $25 an hour to do something, and especially there, there's many ways that you can poison a person to make it look like natural causes. There's also the idea like fentanyl is so freely found in so many facilities, and it's not like inconceivable that somebody like Diddy could get it. And the fact that he already got caught with drugs like he got caught with drugs first, his, his mule got caught with drugs and then they found drugs when they actually arrested him. So it's highly plausible that they could hit him with something like putting fentanyl in his food and make it look like an overdose. They could put something in his food to make it look like he had a heart attack. There's so many different ways to poison somebody that they could de have declared natural causes or self deletion through overdose that I think that he's aware of that. Now, whether or not this is a reality, I'm not saying that this is a reality, but I'm saying I believe that in Diddy's mind, he's super paranoid. Like he doesn't know uh, who he can trust. Probably he can't trust anybody. And when we're talking about who's uncorruptible, let's take anybody that's been a uh, president or a presidential candidate right out of that discussion. I'd say I'm on super uncomfortable with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, like anybody can be bought, bro. Anybody can be bought in a situation like that, especially when you are a, uh, you know, a guard or a correctional staff member. Um, those people are not making elite money. So if somebody offers them elite money, even if it's just a one shot, uh, it is very, very plausible that they are going to take that, uh, especially considering, you know, if you're going against your superiors, that's you, you, you're, it's a done deal, bro. You're going to do what you're told and you're going to get that check. I mean, to be honest with you, if I was the feds, I would have let him go on home confinement just so I didn't have to have that pressure. That's a lot of pressure they're under. Because look at the world. If, if something happens to Diddy in prison right now, all right, you got Epstein. There's conspiracies around that. Did it happen? Did it not? Whatever. That's a one-time thing that's in the modern news. But if something happens to Diddy right now, what is the world going to say? I think that they also felt a lot of pressure not to make it look like he was getting preferential treatment, especially with some of his ties to people 
in that area that are, you know, high up officials and work in law enforcement. It's literally been uh, pretty much established that he had members of the NYPD doing his dirt for him in a lot of cases. So I think they really wanted to separate themselves from him as much as they could. Then you also have to consider the liability of if they put him on home confinement and he wallers out another couple dudes and they come forward or, you know, more women get assaulted. Uh, then, you know, there's liability on both sides that they have to weigh with that. But for them to turn down $50 million, home confinement, having a log of all visitors, him not being able to even contact by phone anyone except immediate family, they, they really proved a point that they weren't giving him any preferential treatment on this one. It's and a lose-lose. I applaud lose, that. Yeah. It's a lose-lose situation. Either way, yeah. either way, they're in a tough spot. But at least this way, they know that they've got him locked down and he's not going to disappear. Because if you have unlimited resources mm -hmm. as far as money, I mean, they're not unlimited. But when you when you put the B on the million, uh, you could get a lot of shit done if you want to disappear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that this probably was the safest bet. And for public eye as far as like the public opinion, because you know that the court of public opinion is gonna be all over this straight from Jump Street. Uh, we've been talking about this long before he was indicted. We've been talking about this before he got raided here on this channel, because all these lawsuits are so damning and there's so much evidence from the shit with Cassie, the shit with Little Rod and shit dating back to like a decade ago. Um, and then the speculations that he may have had Tupac and Biggie murdered. Not that he did it himself, because I think he's straight up pussy. Do something. But, uh, you know, that he put up a million dollars to have Tupac killed. That's been floating around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's also another rumor going around uh, on, in, on national TV saying that he's in the same unit as Sam Bankman freed. Do you think that that's... A likelihood? I don't think so. There's no way they're putting someone like Diddy in any type of general population. And, and the feds, like, here's the biggest misconception about protective custody in the feds. Unless you're in like a witness protection, which he's not because he's not cooperating yet in some other remote location, probably in New York or New Jersey, he is in solitary confinement. And whether they label that as protective custody or suicide watch or whatever, it's all the same. I doubt they put a bunkmate in him in, in his room and he's probably just under constant surveillance, like El Chapo, the same conditions, because those videos leaked of El Chapo, that's what Diddy's experiencing. He's not interacting with other inmates. They're gonna give him wreck in another cage, but there's no, someone like Sam Bankman Freed was idolized in prison. He was a white guy that was uh, someone that stole money, that went to trial, that wasn't a rat. He did very well. And he had pictures circulating recently. He was with big gang members. He was taking pictures with big, swole ass tattooed gang members yeah. and they was throwing up signs. Like this awkward ass little white boy with weird hair throwing up signs with these gang members. Like, yeah, that dude's a celebrity in there, but that's the difference, bro. <laughs> that's the difference. That dude was on some major financial crime and nobody in prison or jail gives a shit if you like defrauded some people. Diddy's on some PP toucher shit, bro. He's a chomo. He's, He's labeled yeah, as a chomo in absolutely. prison. Absolutely. I mean, he, he did some uh, some Gerber baby groupie shit to Justin Bieber and everybody knows it. Whether or not they've proven it yet, everybody knows. We've seen what's going down, so. And imagine if you're a gang member in prison who's facing life in prison for murder or whatever, right? And you're disguising yourself as protective custody. You're telling me they're not gonna go and try to whack Diddy? in the prison to, to gain stripes. Whack him, waller him, yeah. you know, whatever they're into, bro. I, I know lifers that, you know, would take up uh, chomos uh, just, you know, to get their duck sick, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like give them a black eye and a wedding ring, you're mine now. And they'd be getting throat hugs every night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Move them into the cell and it's just gluck gluck time, 24 seven. Yeah, so Diddy's by himself in a cell and the not eating thing, that'll go on for, so, for a little bit, but then they'll force feed him. They've uh, done that. I've talked to guys where that happens. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think the only way he got off suicide watch because he is officially off suicide watch now. Mm -hmm. I think the only way he got off suicide watch was by caving in and eating. I can't imagine they'd let him off suicide watch if he wasn't eating. But he went a solid seven or eight days without eating, is what the reports are saying. So, and, and also remember, it's tactics, right? If I'm a criminal defense attorney, they're probably in a cahoot saying, "Hey, don't eat. We're going to try to get you on bond. It's not safe." 
poison all of this. They're creating doubt about the prison system. That's another really good point, but like both of us having been in prison, we know how easily corruptible all of this mm. stuff is. So I really thank you for your expertise on this, man. I appreciate you coming on. I want to know at home from you guys, from this community, how long do you think he's going to last if they keep him in custody? Do you think he's going to make it all the way to trial and they're going to be able to sentence him? Do you think he's going to end up hemmed up and uh, get Epstein somewhere along the way? Let's talk about this, man. Let me know down in the comments. I love each and every one of you. And until the next one, be good or be good at it, baby. One love.